Hey YouTubers, I just wanted to make this really quick video because I feel like a lot of the Saul fandom doesn't necessarily understand or kind of overlooks the whole reason that Dr. Gordon was actually tested to begin with. And one of the reasons I'm making this is because I kind of have, it was never really stated one way or the other, but I do have these discussions with people both online and people I know in real life, my friends and fans of the series, they always seem to ask me, like, you know, why in Saul 3D when, you know, and spoilers, but why in Saul 3D when Dr. Gordon passes out on the, like, on the floor after dragging himself and cauterizing his wound, does Jigsaw basically pick him up after he's left Adam in the bathroom, put water on his face, and is like, congratulations, Dr. Gordon, you won. Because their hang-up there is essentially, you know, he was given until six on the clock to kill Adam. And thus save his family and everything like that. And then a lot of other people was like, well, you know, like he cheated on his wife and he's emotionally cold to everyone. That's the reason he's tested. And yes, that's true. But I wanted to kind of take a step back and explain why I don't really think that Dr. Gordon ever really cheated on his wife. I mean, I mean, physically, not necessarily emotionally and all that other stuff. And it depends on like what you're going for or what you're kind of using as your reference point, because essentially the only reason that we know or the only reason that Do uh, Jigsaw knows or John Kramer for one degree or another you know just because he knows everything but one of the things they kind of show is the fact that he was told at least in Saul Rebirth which was the comic book version of the prequel or what happened before the original three films now if we all like for anyone who does know that stuff was kind of retconned <laughs> through Saul 4, 5, 6, and 7, because there's no way that those events add up to what else was going on. I mean, I guess they could, considering, but, you know, it, it, it doesn't add up. But in Saul Rebirth, which was the comic book version, like I said, takes place before, there's a lot of differences, like uh, John Kramer is actually a toy maker, and the people that he tests are directly related to him in some way or another, uh, business partners, you know, Zepp is his, like in the movie, it's like an orderly at the hospital who he talks to from time to time, so the thing is, is like in Saul Rebirth, we have Zepp telling uh, John during like one of his checkups, you know, for the whole cancer thing, that he, th he thinks or he knows that Lawrence Gordon is basically cheating on his wife with his student, Carla Song. Which that's what we kind of see in the original Saul film. We see them kind of, she pages him and he makes up a reason to go see her to Shady Motel. And that's when him and Adam are bas basically talking about this particular situation and how Adam believes that he was paid by Tap in order to kind of figure out why he was sleeping with, I guess, Carla Song. But um, you know, if you remember in the movie, he just ridiculously denies this. You know, he he makes this really big show and he goes, you know, I did not sleep with her, blah, blah, blah. And like, I've always taken that as this situation that he didn't necessarily sleep with her. It wasn't that, I mean, it depends on what you consider cheating. I'm not necessarily sure whether they slept together or not. It's highly implied, but it was never necessarily shown. The one thing with Saul is that if it isn't shown, then you never know whether or not like what is true or what isn't true. The whole point of this being that when it comes to someone like Dr. Gordon and why he was tested, it was really just because of the way that he treated people. Uh, you know, as we see in Saul 2 where John is basically waiting for his checkup and he goes into Dr. Lawrence Gordon's office. And then later, this is kind of said by Lynn Denlin in Saul 3, is the fact that he was so emotionally cold, and even in his tape in Saul 1, he's so emotionally cold that he can sit across the room from someone and tell them that they're going to die, and almost exactly when they're going to die, and there is absolutely no emotion, especially with the flashback between Dr. Gordon and his family, or his wife. You know, she goes, I'd rather you just break down and told me you hated me, because at least then there would be passion there. At least then, like, you would actually mean it, and you're not just walking through life with this kind of air of what you're supposed to say or what you're supposed to do and everything like that and I believe the one reason that he actually quote unquote won his test uh, because like I said a lot of people get this confused I think the one reason he actually won his test was he uh, he showed that he was emotionally invested with people outside of just himself and he was willing to care about people outside himself and it's not just his family it wasn't just it wasn't just 
showing the fact that he wanted to save his family so much that he's willing to cut off his own foot. It's also the fact that he didn't necessarily kill Adam. He shot him in the arm and he promised him that he'd come back. And I did do a video on this on what he did and whether or not he did come back or why he didn't come back. So you can check out that video. I'll leave it in the description section below. I'll leave it at the very end of this video. If you want to hear my thoughts on that, because I actually think he did try to come back with that for him or at least some way try to come back for him. And uh, that's what we saw in Saw 3. But I mean, that's a completely different discussion for a completely other video. But I personally believe that one of the things that Dr. Gordon did was he passed his test by not killing Adam and not necessarily, uh, and you know, wanting to save his family and, and, you know, take out Zep or anything, like, you know, solve the problem. He wanted to step up. And I think that was really the whole point. And I know that's kind of completely against what John says. But John talks in riddles so much throughout this entire series. He doesn't necessarily speak up front. And you have to kind of see what's behind the curtain in order to understand what he's saying. Uh, but the biggest thing there is, you know, the Saul 2. You'll find your son in a safe and secure place. And then... Um, and then Daniel Matthews is literally in a safe behind them as they're talking. So um, he doesn't he doesn't talk freely or openly like that. But that's one of the things he wanted to make sure that Dr. Gordon cared about other people enough to not kill Adam, to not do this, that or the other. He wanted to get people to he wanted to see why he was being tested that way. So. I just wanted to clear that up and I wanted to ask your guys' opinions. Like, do you think that he actually cheated on his wife? Uh, I've never taken it that way. I've always kind of taken it as he never really cheated uh, physically. I always thought like he was cheating essentially emotionally. They were hanging out and everything and it was coming to that. But, you know, as we saw and as we mostly see in the movie, if we don't see it, then you really can't say it happened one way or the other. You're making assumptions and obviously... You see where the whole point of the series is making assumptions based on what you saw is not necessarily the right thing. Uh, you know, hence the name. This, the name has nothing to do with the hacksaw to cut off your leg. It's, you know, what you see isn't what you saw, that type of thing. So that's the whole pun and the whole thing about that. So guys, make sure to tell me what you think about this. Do you think that he cheated on his wife? Do you think that's the reason that he actually won his game? Uh, are you satisfied with that? Or do you feel like... It's a little too on the nose, and it was just kind of hashed together after they realized that this was going to be a huge franchise. The fact that the Dr. Gordon theory was so prevailing amongst the fan base that they actually brought him back and made him a part of the canon and a part of the, I guess, ever-growing Jigsaw family, that that's how they kind of rationalized it or anything like that. Make sure to share those comments in the comment section below, and I'm going to catch you on the next video. Bye.